start that. Great. Um, okay, yeah, so my name is Sam. Uh, I've, I'm a relatively new member of social.coop, and I've worked for a while on XMPP, um, an instant messaging uh, system that I think is probably uh, aligns really well with social.coop's values, uh, and I really like it. So I thought I'd give a quick demo and just let people let people see how to use it, what it's about, and um, and we'll so let's yeah let's dive in. Um, so if you've probably used XMPP and not realized it, it's pretty widely deployed uh, in industry. So if you've if you have a Nintendo Switch and it pops up and says you know your friend is online playing Mario Kart or whatever, um, that's being sent through uh, XMPP presence notifications. If you use Zoom or even for not non-chat things, um, if you print a document through Google Cloud Print or get a push notification on your Android phone, um, XMPP is involved somewhere in this process. So it's pretty widely used already. Uh, but, I, but the way I like to use it is for chat. So that's what we're mostly going to be talking about today. Um, one of the other things I like about it and about using it for chat is that there are clients for pretty much every platform you could dream of, including more uh, niche ones. So I've got a handful of major ones listed here, but there are literally dozens of clients. Uh, XMPP has been around for quite a while. It was kind of first created in um, the late 90s as an open source project, really gained prominence in the early 2000s, uh, and has been chugging along and being updated and modernized ever since. Um, so it's really nice how widespread it is and how many clients already exist. Uh, you may hear it some called Jabber on occasion. Uh, the difference is really minimal uh, or uh, not well defined. Um, Jabber was sort of the original name for it. Uh, Cisco kind of stole that name and trademarked it uh, out from under the community. And so XMPP was the name that was given to the actual technical protocol. Um, really, if you hear XMPP or Jabber used, uh, people use them more or less interchangeably. Um, so don't, don't worry too much about the distinction. Call it what you want, and it'll be, be all right. Um, so benefits I see to using XMPP over other chat systems uh, are that it's easy to run and has relatively low resource usage. So this is veering into the technical a little bit, but it's just really easy to set it up on a computer somewhere, have it running, and not have to worry about it too much, not have to worry that you're going to run out of RAM or something. Um, like I mentioned, it's already widely deployed, and there are lots of clients for every platform. It also has really good internationalization and accessibility features. Uh, the protocol tries really hard to let you, for example, have a username using characters in your native language. It doesn't restrict itself to US ASCII like a lot of um, commercial messenger services do. And that, that I, don't, I think that's a really nice benefit. Uh, it, it's just nice to be able to have that comfort of using something in your native language. Similarly, the, there's enough clients for it that you can generally find a client that will have um, sometimes a specialized client for uh, specific disabilities or issues you may have using kind of normal, uh, I should say, uh, using most technology. So it's really easy to find things that do um, lots of uh, closed captioning, for instance, a lot of times uses XMPP. And there are sometimes specialized clients that make things like that or screen readers much easier to use. Um, as I mentioned, as a large existing user base, so I think this is a great benefit if you're trying to use it and you're just getting involved, you want to know something, you want to find a fun chat room to join, there's probably somebody already who knows about it and can point you in the right direction. Uh, and it's also very mobile device friendly. Um, there's sort of a common misconception I hear people say all the time, don't use XMPP, it's bad on mobile devices. I think this was true in the early 2000s when every mobile manufacturer was trying to bundle um, you know, Nokia had their little XMPP client that came bundled in the in the text messaging app um, back before kind of when these were sort of still feature phones with a little Java-based uh, applets. And those were pretty bad. So I, th I think that's where this misconception comes from. Uh, these days, one of the nice things about XMPP is it really is was sort of accidental, accidentally designed early on to be very mobile device friendly. Um, and then more intentionally later, Lots of work was done to make sure it's pretty friendly. Um, and then I, I didn't put it on here, but the other example, uh, the big benefit, I think, and the reason I advocate it among, for, for example, social.coop members, is that it's federated. It, just like Mastodon uh, or email, 
you can have an account on one service running an XMPP compatible, uh, one XMPP compatible service, and talk to people on any other service that's also using XMPP, even if you're using different servers, different clients. Uh, and so that's what we're really going to talk about and demo right now. Uh, so I'm going to try and switch over to screen sharing. Um, when I did this earlier, my entire computer locked up and then died. So you know, if I disappear, bear with me and I'll try to come right back. Uh, so hopefully you can all see that. Um, this is Dino. It's just one, one example of a client. Um, it's not actually the one I use, but I think it's a, re it's a really nice client. Works on Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux, I believe. Uh, I'm on a Linux-based machine right now. Um, and you can see it's you know works pretty much like you'd expect a messenger to work. It's got a handful of chats. Uh, I can go in and see what's been happening in this chat room if I want. Um, it has uh, this is actually an IRC room that is bridged to it. So XMPP has a lot of bridges. And one of the most interesting features is that you can register for an account directly from the client, sign up and use a bridge, and even do things like uh, contact people over. Uh, text message or, or IRC in this case. Uh, so really quickly, I'll just demo creating an account. Uh, I've got a couple set up here already, but we'll make a new one. Um, so I'm going to make another one on uh, yaks.im is a, a server that someone I'm acquainted with runs. So I'll just use that as an example. But there's tons and tons of servers we could sign up with. Uh, so I might, let's see, actually, let me quickly, uh, we'll go into the, sorry, at the right dialog, create account. They've got some servers we can select from here. I'm just going to use x.im. Uh, and then we could, uh, once it communicates with the server and makes sure that registration is enabled, it'll ask us for our info. So we could make a new test account, one, two, three, four, and give it a password. And then uh, hit register. And let's see what happens. Give it a sec to talk to the server. And hooray, we have a new account, and we could begin adding contacts and talking to people. Um, so if I want to, oops, lost the, oh, no. I've lost the dialogue here. Let me, I don't know how to get that back. Huh, well, OK, I've so typical live demo stuff. I've somehow lost the registration dialogue, but it's set to be always on top. And <laughs> now I can't get to anything. Oh, you couldn't see the. Registration dialog window. That's unfortunate. Well, here, let me kill this really quick and I'll. Uh... Anyway, I guess we can uh, we'll skip ahead then and you can trust me that um, <laughs> that we just registered for an account. Let me share a different uh, client that doesn't do multiple windows. I hadn't considered that if I don't share my whole screen, it would just be one window. Let's try this again. OK, here we go. so this is conversations. <laughs> Yeah, I should have shared the whole screen. Um, this is Conversations, different client. Uh, this one's running on my phone, so I'm just kind of uh, screen sharing to my laptop here. Um, but broadly similar, uh, we've so we've registered for an account. This is actually my personal account. Uh, works the same way. And there's an interesting thing uh, we can, so uh, an interesting bridge we can, I'm going to do a quick demo of. Uh, XMPP also supports voice and video calling. And I don't have a video call set up right now, sadly, that we could do. I didn't have any contacts online that could be here right now for me to call. Uh, but I can, if I find the chat I just had open, um, I'm uh, using this bridge, uh, Chiagram. It's a sort of popular bridge to the phone network. I can send myself a text message. Uh, let's see if that actually, let me swap over. Sorry, I'm going to swap to a different account so that I'm not, uh, I've got that one registered with this number. So I have a different account open here. Um, I've got my personal phone number, you know, please don't spam me. Uh, and if I send myself a, a message through this bridge and give it a second, I actually can get a, a text message through XMPP, which is also really nice. So if your friends aren't at their desktop or don't have their, or aren't signed up themselves, you can actually even talk to them if they are, uh, on a normal mobile phone. Uh, similarly, I could place an audio call to myself. Um, so I'm actually using XMPP calling here, but this bridge will connect through the uh, the public phone network. And you can probably hear my phone ringing in the background there. 
I can Sam Whited. leave a message for myself. Um, so yeah, this is one of the kind of, the, if you don't have friends that use XMPP themselves, there are also a number of bridges uh, that include things like the telephone network. And this is something I really like about XMPP is that it, it's been so widely used for so long, even though it's sort of not, um, it's not popular by that name, but services like Google Talk were really popular and spurned, uh, created a lot of development towards bridges and the like. Um, and so we end up with uh, lots of great services and ways to connect. Um, so yeah, there's some some chatter going on in this IRC room I'm bridged to. There's chatter going on in this native XMPP room uh, where I was complaining before this demo about nothing working. Um, and that yeah, that's basically it. That's uh, that's a quick demo of using XMPP. Uh, you saw two clients, one of on a desktop, one a mobile phone client. Um, XMPP uses addresses that look vaguely like emails. So mine is actually the same, whether it's email or JID. So feel free to reach out to me, either be uh, either by email or my uh, JID is what we call it, Jabber ID, uh, but that's the addresses we use in the XMPP network. Um, you can also, if you're a, a social.coop member and, and like cooperative development, join us at our uh, this chat room here, co-op at melium.chat is a, a chat room devoted to co-ops and cooperative development. And I've got my info in the bottom right there for social.coop and and my JID. So yeah, if there are any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. That's the that's the demo. And if there are no questions, we can go ahead and call it. And you know, I'll leave the chat open for a bit. Feel free just to hang out. Uh, Oh yeah, so Eric asks for clarification in how XMPP was accidentally designed for uh, to be mobile friendly. Um, so I, I have to be a bit technical here. Uh, so if you're not interested in the technical side of things, my apologies. Um, XMPP uses a persistent TCP connection. Uh, that So it's effectively always got the connection open in the background. And uh, contrary, this is another reason I think I think this is part of the misconception that it's not mobile friendly. People say, well, yeah, you have a connection open all the time. That's not mobile friendly. But the at least with a 4G sort of LTE modem, the biggest battery drain is the tail time, how long it takes to actually start that modem up and begin communicating again. So to save battery, we shut the modem down when we're not using it and then start it up only when something wants to make a connect, uh, wants to send data. If sending data requires creating a new connection every time, you have this long amount of tail time where you have to start the modem up, there's all that tail time waiting to create the connection, then we can actually send our data. If the connection is persistent, we we don't actually have to, like the connection's still there, but no data is being sent over it, so the modem can shut down. Then whenever we want to send data, we just do so, the modem starts back up, and the existing connection is used, and we don't have to wait for a new connection to be formed. Uh, so, and then we can also do all kinds of optimizations that were done later to further um, make, make that even more friendly. So for example, there are optimizations to when your phone goes to shut off the modem, mobile clients will send a thing saying, or when you turn the screen off, they'll send a thing saying, this client is currently away, screen is off. Uh, and then the server can hold off sending non-essential messages until it says that it's back online. So we can wait until the modem's in use anyways to receive you know, uh, presence updates, your contact is online, for example. Uh, so this was sort of, you know, this was designed, the, the persistent TCP bit was done in, you know, 1998 before everyone had a phone in their pocket, uh, but it actually makes it very mobile friendly on a 4G modem, just kind of accidentally. Um, and then Mar Martin says the uh, as an addendum, there are not actually official dyno builds for Windows yet. So that was my mistake. I said that earlier, I guess it's just, uh, Mac OS and Linux, uh, but that there are third party builds available. So one day we'll have official builds for Dino, but you can use one of those other clients in my, uh... oh, where was that slide? Uh, there, anyway, you can use one of the other clients for Windows in that case. So my mistake with Dino. Any other questions? Well, if not, I hope to see you on uh, on XMPP one of these days. Feel free to add me if you do join. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a good way for social co-op members to 
continue to show solidarity and use open technologies instead of, um, you know, instead of proprietary messengers. Or there are some other more uh, more recent federated messengers that I know some people really like. Uh, I don't personally. I use XMPP because I believe it's sustainably maintained by a standards body that operates in a, they're not officially a co-op, but operates in a sort of one person, one vote manner, uh, which some of the more more recent uh, federated messengers don't do. So anyway, I hope to see you on the Jabber network one of these days. Thanks for your time. And I'll stick around. So yeah, feel free to keep asking questions if you do think of anything. <laughs>